realized. Hmm. It does work. Yeah. <laughs> it will work. It'll, it'll appear. <laughs> uh, she only got four hands. Yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, lunch will happen after church and nibbles. Uh, Abigail's bringing her coffee card if you want a coffee. Yes, you will have to pay for that. A few people have asked me. I'm not that rich. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, uh, but if you want to buy someone a coffee, you can. Yeah, so that would be good. Great to see you all here today. Some people back from traveling and other places, but we've come to worship. We're going to pray. Let's do that. Why not? Let's bow and pray. Father God, we thank you that you are a God who hears our prayers, that you are a God who guides us along paths, through valleys and to the mountaintops. Lord Jesus, we can celebrate you every day, your birth, your life, your resurrection. And we want to honor you here in this place today. You've heard our praise. You're hearing our prayers. And Lord God, we just pause now and again say come. Come Lord God and meet with us in these moments now. Meet with us, Lord Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, we are ready to receive what you have for us this morning. May my words and thoughts honor you, Father God. May there be a message of hope, a word of encouragement. Inspire us to continue to be your people, continue to be your hands and feet here in this place and beyond these walls, stretching out to a community that needs to know Jesus. People are hurting, people are struggling. Maybe they've come with hurts and concerns this morning, Lord, and I pray you bring the healing. I pray you bring the insight. I pray you bring the answers. In Jesus' name, amen. So glad you're with us today. Over the last few weeks, as we've been planning our Christmas in July, and thank you for those who've cooked and baked, and Les and Coral set up the place, and, and all, the, all the people that have helped and will help after our service to get the hall ready, and, and so thank you for that. And, and so the song, Mary Did You Know, has been rattling around in my brain over the, the last few weeks, and hindsight is a wonderful gift, isn't it? Hindsight. And we have God's Word, which is a great gift to us because we have the beginning, the middle, and the end. It's fantastic, amen? We see God's powerful story of redemption and rescue and mercy and grace played out before us on the pages of Scripture and through the songs we've sung today. We see this young girl experiencing an angelic visitation with mind-blowing news of a baby and a pregnancy. Let's hear those words from Luke 1. Verses 28 to 32. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what, what kind of greeting this might be. Doesn't happen every day that angels turn up, anyone? Let me know. Maybe there's some here today. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. She would be the mother of Jesus, the Messiah, and Joseph would be his earthly father, the father of the Son of God. No wonder Mary said, uh, excuse me, how will this be? 
in Luke 1, 34 and following. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. I'm surprised that was her only question. Since I'm a virgin, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And she said, I am the Lord's servant. I can do this. He has found favor in me. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Mary, did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you delivered will soon deliver you if you know the song. Today we have come together to give thanks and to celebrate all our Saviour has done from birth to death to resurrection. We've heard Caroline's faithful confession today that she recommitting her life to Jesus and wants to continue to walk with him and honour him. And we celebrated that this morning a little bit earlier. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm the storm with his hand? In John 9, we have this story of a blind man receiving his sight. Few of us will be lining up for that. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Jesus is saying, night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Poor bloke's blind. Now his eyes are all gummed up with mud and water. It's not a good day, is it? But he tells him in verse 7, Hey, mate, go. Go. Go and wash. Go and wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Fantastic. His neighbours and those who formerly seen him begging, yeah, that was Barry the beggar, we know him. Isn't that the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed it was, but others said no. No, it ain't, looks like Barry. Change his shirt, probably. Mud, spit, water. uh, Only me? Okay. But he himself insisted, hey, I am the man that encountered Jesus Christ and I was blind, but now I... Oh, good, the three of you. (laughs) I was blind, but now I see. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again, the lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation? Throughout the New Testament, friends, we see lives transformed. We see this little family, Mary and Joseph. We see that they faithfully care for this new baby boy and throughout his life. And as Ron reminded us today in Matthew, some wise men come. Come to the house where the boy is, where this young child is. In Matthew 2.11, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. If I was Mary and Joseph, I'd be going, what on earth is going on here? We've had shepherds. There's been a number of months, maybe years, a little bit of a debate on that one. And these wise men from the east come and camels and regal dress and bring gifts for our son. Our son who is the son of God, Messiah, 
Emmanuel. What do we present to him today? What are we going to come and give to Jesus today? What gift do you have for him today? What path does he have you on today? What word do you need to follow from God today? I am your humble servant. In Proverbs 3, 6, Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Let us seek his will in all we do and all we say, and he will faithfully show us the path to take. Like those shepherds, they were never the same. Like us, we are never the same after we have an encounter with Jesus. Whatever road he's planted you on. Christmas in July or December, we can give thanks and rejoice any day. Our lives have been changed. Because we have had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And the shepherds remind us in Luke 2, 17. When they had seen him, they had a visit as well. They spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. They couldn't believe it. All were amazed. We have seen the King, the Messiah, the Chosen One, Emmanuel. He has come, born in Bethlehem. God with skin on. But Mary. But Mary. Treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Treasured up all these things. All that she'd seen. All that she had experienced. The journey to Bethlehem, the coming of the shepherds, the angelic visitation. But she treasured them in her heart and no doubt pondered them and reflected upon them as Jesus grew and became a man and started his earthly ministry. He is showing us which way to go and what path to take. We too are bystanders watching God's word unfold as we see the life of Jesus continue to unfold before us. He calls us to be part of his redemption, rescue story. And I'm glad that we can journey together as his church gathered in this place. He is the same God today as he was yesterday. He's the same God then and he'll be the same God today and tomorrow and into the future. God is with us. God bless you. Amen. Michael. I can't remember how far away we got. Can help me, anyone? <laughs> Give me a nugget. <laughs>
just be patient because it's all about patience. <laughs> Today's service is, uh, I've got to get it and you'll be, you will be blessed. <laughs> so, do you remember that, Renee? for a miracle the heart longs for a little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel the child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of her oh come oh come I can't sing it that high, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, try this. <laughs> try this. From the beginning, guys. You go what a great choir we've got. <laughs> You're gonna earn your, your, your dinner, all right? <laughs> the world waits for a miracle. The heart longs for a little bit of hope. Oh come. Oh come. Emmanuel. Thank you, choir. <laughs> okay, well, um, the order of the agenda of uh, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be clearing this area while we get the tables and chairs set up. So if you would like to um, assist with that, move the chairs out so we can get the tables in. But should I close in prayer or are we continuing on? Okay. Father, thank you that we have had a uh, time of worship today. Thank you that uh, every day is Christmas for us because we just celebrate the birth of our Saviour, and we thank you for that. Amen. And don't forget my presents. And did you notice we ordered the, the snow outside? It's so cold. <laughs>